Summer 2060. The world is at war. And the Allies are on the brink of collapse. We interrupt our programming. This is a national emergency. Important details follow. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. An invasion of this country has been launched by the People's Republic of China. Nor has detected that a second wave of the Chinese invasion is inbound and is expected to arrive soon. It's about a hundred yards away. That's AK-40. North America was attacked by the hegemony with both nuclear fire and a full-scale invasion. Everything west of the Mississippi River was conquered. Except one. The hegemony first hit us with the Great Cannon, a weapon that destroyed every computer and server connected to the Internet. We were blind and our shields went down. We were defenseless to what came next. They immediately hit us with every hypersonic nuclear missile they had. Half of the West Coast went with it. Twelve hours later, the Chinese hegemony landed a million soldiers near the ruins of San Fran, L.A., and Seattle, while the CFR moved to take Alaska up north. Vancouver wasn't hit and the fallout went south, so we survived unscratched. The next three weeks was nothing but an endless stream of refugees from down south. The hegemony didn't seem to care much about Vancouver. They just pushed inland, going straight for the Rockies, attempting to destroy the remaining bits of the U.S. military. Vancouver was completely left alone. We weren't a threat to them. I think they would later regret that decision. Jake is down. Copy. The Allies managed to stop the hegemony invasion along the Mississippi River. Unable to advance further the CFR, prepared to take Vancouver. The Allies could not hold Vancouver. It had neither the manpower or resources to do so. Instead the Allies merely delayed the CFR, as the refugees fled to Vancouver Island. Vancouver was conquered but the island remained free. The CFR made two half-hearted attempts to invade the island but were beaten back. The CFR saw the island as strategically useless and blockaded the island and turned back to fighting the remaining US forces in the Canadian North and Mississippi. Vancouver Island was isolated and surrounded by the enemy. It had become a fortress of 24 million people almost all of them refugees. The island had become a base for the Allies to launch special forces attacks on occupied America and as an emergency landing area for Allied aircraft. The hegemony wanted to conquer the island, but after their first two invasions were repelled, they simply blockaded the island and planned to starve the population into submission. The Allies launched Operation North Star to prevent the complete collapse of Vancouver Island and the Allies supplied the island with food, ammunition, and medicine from the air and from orbit. Thousands of Allied aircraft were shot down in the operation, but just enough supplies went through the blockade to keep the island from collapsing from mass starvation. When the siege on Vancouver Island was finally lifted in 2065, only 7 million people remained. 
The CFR needed to take the heavily entrenched Allied position in Vancouver Island, but it didn't have the unlimited supply of manpower that the Chinese hegemony, or the HIE, had. Its wars in Asia and in the Canadian wilderness had already caused it millions of casualties it could not replace. It had to find a more creative solution to keep on fighting in North America. The CFR normally would rely on its technological edge, but it was preparing to help the HIE invade the European Union. The bulk of its walkers and UAVs were diverted to Europe for that campaign. But in 2062, the CFR implemented Order Echo 62. But the beauty is that now we are not using electrodes. In recent years, Delgado has shown that the behavior of monkeys can be altered using low-power pulsating magnetic fields. But in these experiments, there were no antenna implants. Any function in the brain, emotions, intellect, personality, well, could be perhaps modified by this non-invasive technology. Delgado's research has so far been limited to animals. But in the Soviet Union, a radio frequency, or RF device, has been used for over 30 years to manipulate the moods of mental patients. Echo 62 had CFR doctors surgically implanting computer chips in the brains of captured enemy soldiers that forced them to fight for the CFR. If these soldiers refused to fight, surrendered, or even looked at their handlers funny, their chips would be activated and they would die instantly. The Allies would come to nickname these mind-controlled soldiers Brain Slaves or rent -a It was a cheap and effective program for the CFR. They would eventually force almost 30 million captured Allied soldiers to fight for them in every front until the program was discontinued in 2067 when the Allies developed a countermeasure to the implant that saved the host's life. In 2063, the CFR used the brain slaves against Vancouver Island in two major engagements. The first in February was 150,000 strong, which was repelled by the Allies after heavy losses. The second occurred in September, with double the strength, but this engagement was easily repelled by the Allies who lost only 13,000. The Allies had a new weapon of their own. 2065. Millions died preserving Vancouver's freedom. It was the only territory in Western America to remain free during the Third World War. A feat that those who survived are proud of even today.